TorahCafe.com. The Talmud tells us that no matter what level of leadership, but anyone who is appointed or elected to a position of leadership of any, any nature, it doesn't happen from the people, it happens from above. It's destined to be that way by God Almighty. So having said that, I am very honored to be here with you today. It's this interesting, in, in uh, today's Parsha, I'll give you the, uh, the uh, Vautora on today's first Parsha of Ayetze. Fascinating. It says that our forefather Jacob had to leave home because of his brother, and he had to travel to a distance to find a uh, wife, and uh, it got dark, and he laid down to rest, and in order to keep safe, be secure from the wild animals that might be in the, in the, at night, he put little rocks around his head, little rocks, and uh, that was supposed to protect him. And the Rebbe asks, in the talk that I remember from 1950, that uh, what, would, what good would it do if he had rocks around his head? What about the rest of his body? And the Rebbe answered very simply, that if the Chabad, if the intellect, the head, is okay, if it's beseder, then everything is beseder. And the Rebbe noted another, uh, many things, but I'll pick one more. Those rocks that put, he put around his head, Rashi tells us today that the rocks had, were arguing which, one, which rock will he put his head on. And uh, in order to placate them, God made one big rock out of all the little rocks. And what happened was, at the end, when he got up in the morning and he had to continue on his journey, he prayed to God that if you will give me all that I need and I will be successful in my journey, when I come back home on my way back to the parents, this rock that I rested my head on in this horrible journey of mine, leaving home, etc., will be made a, a, a Beis Alekim, the Beis HaMikdash. It was Mount Moriah that he rested on, and the Mount Moriah that would be built the Beis HaMikdash. And the Rebbe brought out from this that the most material of things, a rock, how much more can be more material unless uh, there is vegetation, has some life, it grows, it changes. A rock, a rock never changes. How can that become a godly, holy uh, edifice? And the Rebbe explained that ultimately the goal of the world, the, the, the purpose of the Jewish people, is to lift it up, to connect the spiritual with the material, and when you do that, the material actually becomes holy. For example, leather. You can make many things out of leather. You make shoes out of leather, purses out of leather, all kinds of things. But you can also make tefillin. The straps of the tefillin and the boxes of the tefillin you also make from leather. What's the difference? The leather that you make shoes of, you throw them out in the rubbish when you're finished with them. Tefillin, I can say, tashmishi kedusha. It's holy. It has a holiness about it. And you have to be very, very careful with it. The same thing is true with everything that is material. When we use it for a mitzvah, it becomes holy. The same is true with human beings. And I go back to the leadership role that you play. You are different than other people who are not partners in such a wonderful business that we have. I'll tell you a story. I've told it before, but I, I, I live with it because I was there at the time with the Rebbe about 45 years ago. It was late at night after one. It was the night that the Rebbe received guests, visitors. And that night, on the schedule of appointments, were five or six couples that were very much involved in the New York Board of Philanthropies. At that time, it was before they called it the UJA. And in the middle of the discussion, the Rebbe suddenly sells, says to them, I'll tell you who they were, because they're not with us anymore, they won't mind, it was Larry Tish and his wife, she's around, she should live with me well, Jack Nash from the, uh, 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 forget the, 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 the hedge fund that he headed, Max Kempelman, who was in charge of uh, relations and disarmament between the United States and America, a Washington attorney. There was a, a, a 
Jack Levy there, who, who just gave $150 million to Bard College up in Hudson County. A very distinguished group of people. And the Rebbe says, you know, we're all in business. He started to, before he continued, he noticed that these fellows picked up their ears. We're all in business? We are in business. Rebbe, you're not in business. And the Rebbe explained, in your business, you're successful business people. If a deal comes your way, that for whatever reason you, you're not, you don't have any fluid, you don't have any cash, you go to a bank, you have a good resume, you buy the money, and you never live, miss an opportunity. You, you do the deal. In my business, when I deal with souls, and souls come and souls go, and a young boy or a young girl comes into a Chabad house, or would have to come into a Chabad if there was, Chabad house, if there was a Chabad house there, for advice, for guidance, for counseling, for, for, for kindness, for charitableness. And if we're not there, because we don't have the money, we may never see that soul again. So time is of the essence. And the Rebbe spoke today, he was, he was speaking about higher alloca allocations for Jewish education. And as the Rebbe once said by a Febrengen, he asked a very simple question. He says, and all the misses we do, we make a bracha before. You put on film, you make a bracha, you eat, you make a, you make a bracha on what you eat. And why is it stuck as such an important mitzvah? It's in fact, the, the, Yishal, the Jerusalem Talmud says that stuck is on an equal level of all the mitzvahs, other mitzvahs put together. Why is it we don't make a bracha on stucker? And the Rebbe answered very simply. If a hungry person knocks on your door and he asks for, for food, or for something with some sustenance, and you say, oh, I'm going to do a mitzvah. Well, I have to put on my gout, I have to put, I go to the mikvah, I have to, I have to, I have to get ready for the, doing the mitzvah. In the meantime, the person can pass out. So time is of the essence. And I know the lives of the shluchim, God bless them all, and they are really remarkable. It's a group of, 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 uh, of different kinds of people. They're all different. All different, but you see at this kinnis, they're all, all concerned with the same goal, with the same success. And talking of leadership, I'm reminded of a story, and I see it in the shluchim, and I hope I see it in you as well, the partners. They tell the story of a rabbi, this happened in Europe, who was a very saintly man, and they used to refer to him as the Oberrabine, sort of a chief rabbi. And one day, a young cynic came to him and says, Rabbi, what's the meaning of an Oberrabine? And the rabbi put his hand on the shoulder of the young man, says, sit down, I'll tell you what an Oberrabine is. In Europe, they used to have, every community had its own chief rabbi. So there was a rabbi who was the rabbi of a city and had many synagogues under his, he was a master of. And then there were cities in the country or a state that uh, had an Oberrabine of all those institutions. And uh, they, they were each master of themselves and the people that were under them. And, and, and they had positions, that is. And then there's an Oberrabine who was master of himself. That's the most difficult thing. The shluchim are not hired rabbis. They are leaders in the true, uh, true, true, true sense of the word. As has been said, the Rebbe didn't create followers, he created leaders. And you are part of that leadership. And how lucky and blessed you are to be partners in that kind of a deal. Now, in the last sedra of the Torah, just before Moses was to pass on to his reward, he blessed the Jewish people. Each, each of the 12, 12 tribes he blessed. And it's noteworthy that when it came to Yisachar Uzvulun, Yisachar Uzvulun were two brothers of the 12 tribes. Yisachar were the students, the, those who studied Torah day and night. And Zvulun were business people who would travel, do business, and support Yisachar, those who studied. And in his blessing, he refers to Zvulun, the merchant, before Yisachar. Smach Zvulun b'tseisecha, v'yisachar b'eholecha. And this is just before Moses was ready to pass on to his reward. reward. And Rashi says very simple. Because if it wouldn't be for the business successes of Zvulun, the Yisachar, the, 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 the rabbis and the students, the Talmud Chachomim, would not be able to have peace of mind. So this is a wonderful deal we have going. 
Shluchim uh, and Balabatim. And I just want to bless you all with all, the, God should bless you with all the things you wish for yourselves. Good health, happy families, nachas from the children, and very successful business. And as I said before, the Rebbe pointed out in these two stories that I just told you that it's not a matter of, only of giving, but time is of the essence. So I suggest when you get back home, the Balabatim at the Shluchim, let the, go into the Shluch and say, what do, you, what do you need today? What's, what's the bank statement today? What's, <laughs> what, what can we do for you? And just take care of them. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the whole